How's it going everyone? Josh from Dykes Enterprise here. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Visual Weld Acceptance Criteria Gauge, more commonly referred to as a VWAC gauge. It's a very common piece of equipment that all welders should know how to use, and sadly most welders don't even know what it is. So let's go ahead, head over to the tool bench, and take a look at what we got. Alright, so what we have here is a VWAC gauge. Visual Weld Acceptance Criteria Gauge. This is going to be used for inspecting groove welds to verify that the weld meets VT acceptance criteria. So what we have here is our measurement arm that comes over to your indicator on the high-low scale. The high-low scale is ticked off in 64ths of an inch and is marked every 16th of an inch. Now Anything above this zero on the scale is going to be below flush, below the surface of the base metal. Anything below that zero on the scale is going to be above flush, so above the surface of the base material that your uh, gauge is actually reading off of. Next to that, we have a length scale in 1 16th of an inch increments. We also have a 1 16th inch pour scale and a 1 8th inch pour scale. You have your thumb knob used for tightening and loosening up your measurement and indication arm. And that's pretty much it. Now you do want to take good care of these, make sure that the tips stay nice and sharp, that you're not using it as a slag pick, you're not banging them around or beating them around, and that the indicator tip has not been bent. If yours becomes damaged, make sure you go out and get this replaced, otherwise it will not read accurately when you're doing a VT on your weld. All right, so what we have here is a D1.1 vertical up practice plate um, from a buddy of mine. He's been working on his uh, vertical up structural steel, so we're gonna use this as an example. A couple things we're gonna be checking for. First one, we have an area down here that appears to be underfilled, so we're gonna use the gauge to check that. We have some undercut going up both sides. However, right here is gonna be the deepest part of it. That's actually where we have a tie-in. We have a stop here. That's part of the crater, and then we have a start, and it didn't fully fill in that crater. We left a little bit of undercut right in there. So this is the deepest one. That's the one that we're going to check. And then from there, we're going to check for what we call excessive reinforcement. So we're going to check right here and right here, which should be the two highest points of this uh, weld bead. In order to do this, you want to take your gauge first thing, crack your thumb screw loose, hold it down onto a nice flat piece of material, and just make sure that it properly zeroes out. So we're good there. It is currently reading zero. I know it's a little hard to see on the camera because of the light. So after we verified that the gauge is calibrated and reads zero, you want to make sure that the bottom edge of this gauge is always completely flat onto the base metal anytime you're taking a reading, and that it's not resting up on a spatter or resting anywhere on the weld bead itself. So we're going to set that down flat. We're going to hover over top of the lowest part of the underfill. We want to crack that thumb screw loose. And we're going to slide gently down that arm. And make sure that it is touching at the lowest part of that weld. And we're going to take a look at that. And once again, it's a little hard to see. All right, now it's reading zero. So this is not considered underfill. It's considered flush. Moving on from there to do undercut, it's a very similar process. We're going to make sure the gauge is flat. We're going to go into the deepest part of that undercut. Slide that measuring arm down. Gently tighten up on the thumb screw. And then bring it up. And we're going to double check that just to make sure that we're in the deepest part. looking a little bit better so we are just about at a 32nd of an inch right between that 64th and a 32nd line and allowable tolerance for d11 code is going to be 1 32nd of an inch so that being just under is going to be a acceptable amount of undercut so we're not going to bother to check any of the undercut going down the right hand side here because none of this is any deeper than that point right there so now if you were going to check for excessive reinforcement, we're going to come over to the highest part of that gauge, or pardon me, highest point of the weld with the gauge. 
And we're going to snug that down, make sure we're good. Now we're reading below the zero, which means that we are above flush. And we are just shy of one eighth of an inch, which is allowable. And we're going to come up here and we're going to do the same thing to the next highest spot. And once again, just barely below an eighth of an inch. So that's going to be allowable also. So it may not be the prettiest plate. However, it would pass a VT inspection. So as you can see, using a VWAC gauge, a visual weld acceptance criteria gauge, is not that difficult to use. You can buy these online and you can also purchase these at any of your major welding supply shops locally. So hopefully now you know how to use a VWAC gauge or at least have a better understanding of what a VWAC gauge is used for and how to use one. Take a little bit of time, get a little bit of practice. You'll be feeling very comfortable with the VWAC gauge in no time at all. You can pick those up at any of your local welding supply shops or online. So I appreciate your time today. Uh, as usual, do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything you'd like to see in a future video, go ahead and drop me a comment below and we'll see what we can do. Until next time, though, I appreciate it and have a good one.